<clears throat> okay, people are logging in. Let's just give it one minute. And hello, they're... everyone. Yeah. No, that's fine. That's okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, we're about to start this uh, webinar sponsored by One Meta. Uh, we'll just give it a minute so that everyone can log in. So please sit tight and we'll start very soon. In the meantime, if you want, you can use the chat and let us know where you are joining us from. Uh, myself, I'm in Rome. Saul, where are you? I'm right now in the Bahamas, in Nassau. Very nice. Chris? Hello from Utah, the mountains of Utah. Okay, and Vera? Hello from Seattle. See you. Okay, wonderful. I can see there are many people joining in. Um, Okay. Um, all right, so welcome to today's gala webinar. As I said, it's sponsored by One Meta. We're going um, to see something amazing. And so I'm not gonna waste any time and hand it over to Vera and she'll introduce One Meta, Saul and Chris. Vera, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Isabella. And thank you and hello to all of you. Um, today we have a very exciting um, opportunity to view One Meta's technology. Uh, One Meta and Accorby have partnered up recently to bring new and exciting uh, services to our clients. And today I have the great honor to introduce to you the next presenter, the CEO and founder of One Meta. Saul Leo is a visionary leader at the crossroads of technology and business. He's armed with a systems engineering degree, MBA and executive studies in digital initiatives and regressional statistics from Military University in Venezuela, the Marriott School of Business, Kellogg School of Management and Stanford University. During his career, he served as TV station manager where he expanded business across 20 countries. He reached 55 million mobile devices and translated 15,000 hours of content. Later, as director of global initiatives, he built one of the largest publisher networks in the world with 256 million social media followers and 4 billion monthly impressions by creating more than 70 pieces of content daily in 80 languages. Saul founded MetaLanguage, and uh, AI architecture revolutionizing interpretation and behavior analytics industries. He has advised major entities, served on Oracle board, ad council, transacted with industry giants such as Sony, Mattel, AT&T, and earned 11 regional Emmy awards, solidifying his status as transformative force in technology business and creativity. So with all these great credentials, I'll give you Saul Leo. Excellent. Vera, thank you so much. It's uh, It's been um, an honor to have uh, such a great partnership, but more importantly, the friendship. And uh, it's, uh, it's I really appreciate the, the intro today. And um, um, not only uh, to you and uh, um, and the industry, but, um, but to everyone, um, I'm here to serve. And hopefully that will come become clear to the presentation today. Um, let me start sharing my screen. Let's see here. Fantastic. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So um, let me do. Uh, so this is just four looking statements. Uh, let me see if I can. Oh, excellent. So that's a little about uh, about the family. As as Vera was uh, was talking, uh, this is uh, Claudia, Santiago, Paulo, Andrea, Sofia, and and Coco. Um, it's uh, I live in Utah. I'm in a convention here in the Bahamas now, but uh, I live in Utah and I I love the mountains. I'm originally from from South America, from Venezuela, and uh, I want to start the presentation by by saying um, that at one meta we create a more understanding world. We initially, as an organization, we thought that uh, our, our mission was to increase or provide multilingual environments 
and even though that it still is the fact today, um, these multilingual environments that we are recreating allows individuals from different uh, backgrounds and cultures to communicate. But the reality is that as we're building uh, our models, as we're you being seeing the use cases, we realize that it's much more than that. As we all know, the um, Lukwin said, the limits of my language means the limits of my world. And it's not only the limits of the language. We know that language is a protocol to express our thoughts and our emotions. And ultimately, that's the goal. That's why the vision and mission of the company is to create a more understanding world. And we do so. Uh, one world, many languages, one understanding by providing today, we start tackling our vision of creating a more understanding world through real time transcription, simultaneous translation, conversation summaries, task assignments per user, which is a you know, fascinating. We, we have a biometric speech recognition that we all understand every person speaking on the same microphone and we'll do a summarization per, per individuals. Uh, it's it's fantastic. We provide sentiment analysis on the fly. Um, in specific languages, we have seen, especially when we do transcription, over 95% accuracy, um, same language transcription, and we have, of course, multilingual capacity. But first, I want to talk about the noise. There's been so much noise with artificial intelligence, and we try to take a very pragmatic approach to it. So some of the things that, uh, that we have seen with artificial intelligence, um, there's a lot of um, myth. Um, some organizations, some PhDs in AI are trying to give a conscious to a machine, for instance. We take a very useful, simple approach, and it's basically with languages, we focus on the speech to text. We create a document for attestation. Um, and as we do so, we constrain the, the technology to what is being said. But in reality, one of the things that uh, makes us unique is that we do not focus only on the AI. And I will talk a little bit more about that. Our differentiating aspect is that we have done for over a year, a lot of work on pre-AI, and we focus on that. And we have also focused on post-AI. And this is one of the competitive advantage that we have focused on. So let me go and let me explain a little more of what that means in terms of the technology that we have built. So we have the artificial intelligence and we have language models uh, we have language models with Azure, AWS. We have language models with uh, DeepL. We have language models with um, IBM Watson. So we can connect to all of those. And as we have those, we look at the size of their databases specific, and we're able to maximize accuracy with those. But And this is kind of an aggregating of the AI. But some of the things that people haven't really you know, figured out, realized that the ecosystem is much more than just the AI. AI is really a, a variable in the equation. We have focused a lot on the pre-AI. So we have focused on the voice and noise cancellation. Um, we have focused in voice isolation. And one of the things that is interesting, it's about... 30% of the accuracy of the translation it speaks to text actually comes from the microphone, 30%. So we have really focused on the voice, on the quality of the voice and uh, kind of increasing, focusing on that. And that has really helped to increase the accuracy. Another aspect that we have focused on is the post AI. So we have work with you know different servers throughout the world and we work on servers that are close to the to the user so it's in that way a lot of the transaction 
that it's happening, it happens through um, the CDN at a content delivery network level, and I did not. So in that way, it's really, really, really fast. And I will provide some statistics about that. So not only we have focused on the AI, we have focused on the pre-AI to increase accuracy. And we have focused on post-AI to increase speed. And um, these are you know, some of the architectures that we have built out uh, in terms of database, API servers, middle ledger. It's a, it's a fascinating uh, architecture that you know, we have over, over nine patents now. And we have not stopped there. But you will see that I will call a phone number, no app, no internet. I will talk in Spanish. The other person will hear me in English. Someone could be in the streets of Shanghai, walking on the streets, no app, no internet. And their colleague could be calling from Germany. And they are speaking German. And the other person is listening in Chinese and vice versa. No app, no internet. We have worked with every carrier on the world. It's just a fantastic technology. So these are some of the products that we have built out. We have Verbum Call, Verbum On-Site, Verbum Meetings, Verbum Events, Verbum Transcript, and coming soon, Verbum Meetings in partnership with Microsoft Teams. And um, I will be talking to you know about all of all of this. This is just a great, great technology that is um, at your self service. So let's let's just start right now with uh, verbal meetings. So voila. So what you're seeing right now is verbal meetings, and as you can see, it's a simple uh, video conferencing tool that you have your video, you have your chat on the right, and you can see subtitles as I'm pronouncing the words. So it creates a very interesting dynamics. Someone else can come into the room and they select their spoken language and their caption language. So I'm gonna go now into the Spanish. And let me choose, oh, before I do that, so let me go here and show you. Look at how many Arabic options and dialects do we have. Arabic, Egypt, Israel, Jordan, Lebanon, Oman, Qatar. Then you go to different types of Chinese. Look at all those English. English Kenya, English India, English Estonian. So that's Estonian. English United States, English United Kingdom, English Tanzania. So let me go now to Spanish. It's, I'm, of course, I'm biased to Spanish. Um, so I, I've been living so long for the, in the United States that I will choose the Spanish United States. So I click Spanish United States. Um, I can put the captions in any language. I'll just keep it in English for now so you'll be able to see a translation. And I click Save. Entonces, de una manera muy dinámica, nosotros ahora podemos hablar en español y la persona del otro lado de la pantalla puede ver todo en inglés. Y esto ocurre de una manera muy, pero muy rápida, como pueden ver. Algo interesante, déjame ahora cambiar el inglés ahora. Perfecto. So, uh, a few weeks ago, I was uh, talking to a company called Tencent. It's, just a, it's a great company out of China. And the gentleman on the, on the other side, um, his English was really, really rough, to say the least. And my English is not perfect. So I went uh, and told um, Wang Li to speak Chinese. And then I went and spoke Spanish. And I was reading everything that he was saying in Chinese and in Spanish. And he was reading everything that I said, was saying in Spanish and Chinese. And we talked for almost 90 minutes. It was just amazing. The conversation fluid. It was just like sitting there and watching a Netflix movie. It was just fantastic. It was really, really good. Now, another thing I want to show, show you is the chat. So if you go to the chat, and let me see if I can zoom here. I'm going to be writing. I'm going to be writing in, uh, in Spanish. Hola. 
Dice, hola, ¿cómo estás? And you can see on the top it says, hi, how are you? I'm going to do, I live two years in Portugal, so I'll put here. And then going to do danke. And I'm going to do ciao. So I wrote in four different languages. I didn't set up anything. It recognized the language. You can do long sentences and on the fly. We can um, it trans homogenize everything to the language that I um, um, of my choice. Well, let me just put my. So this is one of the um, the things that that we're building that we are able to do right now. Any any chat can we can implement this in, in chat. We can have customer service in any language and homogenize it, no, the users will never know that someone on the other side is speaking a different language. And we really think about the economics that this will bring to the world, um, and we're excited for it. So go back to um, the presentation here. So that's verbal meetings. Uh, enhance your line meetings by having real-time simultaneous speech-to-text translation, interpretation, transcription. Oh, another aspect I almost forgot. We can go right here. And we have a transcription of everything that's being said. And by the time, and it could be in different languages. So um, someone can be talking in German, in Italian, in Chinese, in Russian. We have 152 languages. And all of a sudden, they can see the transcription homogenized in their language. So you can have a German, Italian, Chinese, uh, Portuguese, and all of a sudden, you can see everything in, um, in any language. So I'm going to do check and you can see everything um, in check as I'm pronouncing the works I can go into um, you know, Dutch and you can see everything in Dutch um, as I'm I am pronouncing the words in English um, so you can have any combination between the spoken language and the um, and the captions so you can do Chinese simplify, what would you show there? Um, I can go Arabic, what would you show there uh, on the fly as I am uh, pronouncing uh, the words. Okay, so we're good with, um, let me see, oh, we're good with, um, let's, oh, sorry, I put the wrong language here. It was, Okay, perfect. Okay, excellent. So that's uh, verbum meetings. Um, it's uh, you. You can go to website verbum.ai and just just grab this. It's a um, fifty, a hundred dollars. You can get a certain uh, amount of um, of minutes that you will get, and you can share this. This could be used uh, today, and we provide a white label. Um, um, application for it uh, for your organization. It really expands the possibilities, and that's one of our focuses. But now I want to talk about Verbum on site. So, with that said, let me see if I can. This will go right. So, I'm talking in English right now, and you can see English, Spanish, Chinese, and Czech. And this is a, it's a fascinating, fascinating tool. You can actually go to an event, QR code what is being said, and on your phone, you can read everything in 152 languages. In fact, I would love for you guys to go right now and QR code it. So feel free to QR code. And as you cure code in your phone, you should be able to see everything that I'm saying in 152 languages on the fly. So let me go back to this setting right here. I think 
think for a minute. We just made this event ADA compliant. Accessibility Disability Act. Someone can come into this meeting that has a hearing infer challenge and all of a sudden they can read everything that is being said. Now, we have not stopped there. Within a few weeks, you'll be able to put your earpods and listen to everything that is being said on the fly. So your QR code, you put your earpods and you start listening to the speaker simultaneously in near real time. Our technology is one eighth of a second. I'm sitting here in the Bahamas. This is going to a server in Seattle. Then it's going through Zoom and then it's going to where you are in one eighth of a second, which is 0 0.125 of a second. And as you can see, the quality, it's pretty amazing. Pero lo más interesante de todo es que puedo hacer varios idiomas en el mismo micrófono. Por ejemplo, como pueden ver, estoy hablando español y pueden ver todo lo que se está transcribiendo in the same sentence with two languages. Now, let me talk about that for a minute. When you're talking speech to text, there's about 10,000 possibilities or 10,000 permutations per millisecond as you're pronouncing the words. So I say, hello, and the machine's thinking, okay, hello, and it's like, okay, it's hell, it's, and it goes hello. It locks into hello, the word, the, the wave of the words with the phonetic dictionary, it has a match, and that's 10,000 possibilities per millisecond. When you do two languages, so now the machine has to look into two places, English and Spanish, select the one and put it in, it's about 10 million permutations per millisecond. Hemos resuelto esto. Y como pueden ver, en cuanto estoy hablando, todo se está transcribiendo en inglés or you can go back to Spanish in the same sentence without me touching anything. We can do that with up to five languages. You can just pass the microphone. We did, um, uh, we've done several events, uh, World Congress of Family, 12,000 people. You know, we have 12,000 people sitting there. We have people from Germany, people from the United States. And the, most of the 12,000 attendees spoke Spanish. And it was like watching a, a Netflix a Netflix movie. It was just great. They were sitting there looking at subtitles. Now they will be able to put their AirPods and just listen to it on the fly. No logistics problem. No sending equipment. No headsets. No booth. It just works great. So... That is Verbum on site. Well, let's go back to the presentation now. This is actually one of the events that we did at uh, uh, Banamex. Um, you can see a presenter there, and it's, they were talking uh, in English. The subtitles were showing in Spanish uh, on the top of the screen. It was just a fantastic, fantastic event. You know, great, great user experience. Well, that's the QR code. Uh, you can still, you know, if you didn't have a chance, you can still uh, QR code there and you will see the rest of the presentation with the technology. So that's Verbum on hands, uh, Verbum on site, sorry, enhance your event experience with live artificial intelligence translation, interpretation, transcription. By the time you end the meeting with Verbum on site, you have a transcript of the whole con of the whole conversation on the fly in 152 languages. You choose your language and you will have it right there. So now, let me talk about Verbum Call. I'm so, so excited about Verbum Call. This is like kind of the pinnacle of our technology. We we love, we have negotiated with carriers across the world. We put the technology in a phone, no app, no internet. And I will actually give you the phone so you guys can, can see it. It's just a great, great experience. So I'm not going to call, make a phone call right now on the fly. 
I'm going to be calling right now this phone number. Hello, and welcome to Fairbanks Call. You have 90 seconds to experience our over-the-phone interpretation trial. English and Spanish are already set up. Please begin speaking after the tone. Esto es maravilloso. Puedo hacer traducción consecutiva y tan rápido termine mi frase después de dos segundos se va a repetir todo en inglés. This is wonderful. I can do consecutive translation and as soon as I finish my sentence, after two seconds, it will repeat everything in English. And the interesting thing is can this service can do the same into Spanish. Y lo interesante es, ¿puede este servicio hacer lo mismo en español? Y hay una cosa que me gusta mucho, puedo hablar diferentes términos. Por ejemplo, puedo hablar de temas médicos o legales. Por ejemplo, yo no sé decir en inglés la palabra esternocleidomastoideo, lo cual es el músculo más largo del cuerpo humano. And there's one thing that I really like. You can speak different terms. For example, I can talk about medical or legal issues. For example, I don't know how to say the word sternocleidomastoid, which is the longest muscle in the human body. Welcome to Verbal Call. This type of technology, I will hope it will create a more understanding world, that we will increase the budgets, for instance, hospitals, that most of the budgets, as you all know, is going to the doctor, and that's great. But we want to increase the patient outcomes by, and I'll talk more about this in a minute, by increasing the CNA, the nurse practitioner, this, uh, this is what we, what we envision. Um, this is a phone number. I can actually dial any person in the audience. And then I merge this phone number to the call. And voila, we have an AI interpreter on the call, on the fly. And at the moment we uh, finish the call, every person will get a transcription of the whole conversation in the original language, you know, English, Spanish, and the interpreter, uh, the AI interpreter, or you can actually homogenize it to any other of 152 languages. By the way, we can do permutations of 152 languages. We can get Cambodian to Portuguese or German and Korean, any of those combinations on the fly. That is verbum call. Enhancing the human experience over the phone interpretation in 150 languages or more. One of the things that we have thought about is how do you build this in ways that is fully, fully accessible? Everything that you have seen today can be implemented into any software with three lines of code, not 900, not 10,000, not five, three lines of code. You can recreate the chat, the subtitles, a speech to text, text to speech, a speech to speech interpretation. We can build all of this. You can build all of this with three lines of code. We have worked really hard into this technology. In fact, you know, one of our clients for API is a metaverse company, and they build a whole um, experience of gallery in Germany, the, one of the museums in art museums in Germany, and they bring everywhere the metaverse from different parts of the world, but they realized that there was a barrier, and our company is not about barriers, it's about bridges. So they put this technology with three lines of code, and then every person start talking the metaverse in German, and the other person will hear in Spanish, in Spanish and here in German, back and forth. And all the participants in the metaverse were able to interact with our technology as it was being implemented into their software. This and much more is what is possible with our technology. Verbum API. 
So competitive advantage. Um, this is for verbal meetings specifically, but you can see everything that we're focusing on and some of the areas that lack. Um, one of the things is multilingual environments. Yes, Microsoft Teams, they can actually do translation, but that is everyone has to speak the same language. In our case, we can do subtitles or speech to speech when every person is speaking a different language. So it creates a great dynamics of it. These are some of the numbers in terms of uh, language available for translation. You can see some of the numbers there. This is our word error rate for transcription. And this is a multilingual lag, um, translation lag. We do it in, you know, for this is specifically for uh, verbum uh, call. Um, we do about 1.2 seconds. Um, and that's mostly because the person have to wait for the one to finish the idea. But if we're doing subtitles, it's about one eighth of a second, 0 0.125 of a second. So now that I have um, have shared um, all these all this information in terms of our technology, I would like to share with you some of the areas uh, that we have clients on and that we're working with. The call centers this is a massive um, global uh, thirty three hundred and forty billion dollars um, as a as an industry. All of these services we envision to provide through LSPs. That's why we are here. This is what we're looking for. I want to focus our technology specifically on serving LSPs. Why? Because LSPs have developed a reputation. LSPs know their clients. They have invested in decades of relationships. And my job is to make you proud. I'm building the, mess, the best technology for you. I really am. Our team of 50 plus people involved in the company are working really, really hard for you. We want to provide the best of the best for your technology. So you own the relationships, you own the sales teams, you own the account managers. That's, that's an area that we're not focusing on. We're focusing on the technology and provide white level services for all of you. Call centers is, is one of those. You, we integrate this within, from two weeks to six weeks to any call center. They start talking in English. The other person talks in German or Italian. You can have subject matter experts in Brazil that are serving everyone around the world. And you get a transcript by the end of the call. Healthcare, I kind of alluded to this already. You know, the patient outcomes are so important, but did you know that patients talk to the doctor sometimes less than 10% of their whole experience with the hospital, with their medical care? We are HIPAA compliant. We are SOC2 compliant. This is an area that it's, it's you know, exploring as much as we have the call centers, healthcare, just exploring our, in our in our, in, in our industry. Education, I'll show you some pictures. We were at the event in uh, Texas presenting um, with um, some LSPs to 700 schools. And that's only about 60 school districts. In the United States, there are 13,600 school districts. And it was a, it was a great event. Um, out of um, those 700 schools, we had got interest of doing a pilot right away that same day of about 250 schools or 23, 24 school districts. It was an incredible. Just in California, there's $3 billion allocated to Title I which is, you know, parent-teacher relationship. And they have massive, massive challenges on this. This is a great opportunity 
to really expand the user experience and provide a great um a great experience to everyone um there was a use case that uh, to kind of touched my heart there was a, a kid in texas from cambodia that broke his arm and it took three hours to find an interpreter to actually talk to their parents so he could go into an ambulance we provide the technology verbal call within one second and at least you can get the message across there's a lot more than that is needed uh and at the moment you do need interpreters this is not a solution for everything, but at least you can get those communications. We can serve our communities in order to expand to a more understanding world. Financial, you know, there are banks that need this. This is the other fascinating thing. And this is why we're not only focusing on translation or interpretation, we're really focusing on understanding Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is a, just a, a very interesting country. You know, the Bank of Zimbabwe. You know, hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, there are other banks across the world, they do not have a transcription tool in Swahili or in their in uh, in their native tongue. We can provide that. You can provide that. You know the organizations, the banks, Singapore, Vietnam, Cambodia, you know, Brazil, Argentina, South Korea, Japan. And we can actually serve them same language transcription with personal, with privacy, with toxicity elements, with sentiment analysis on the fly. This is this is what we're able uh, to build in same language uh, models, all connected to either any any of our products. You know, Accenture, Deloitte, and Touch. You know, this is just a, a very interesting gaming. So Epic Games was one of the companies that were being. Um, contacting they're being reaching out ten cents I mentioned already think what we can do on gaming the in network effects the nod which is a, the common denominator the smallest common denominator for ga multiplayer gaming is actually a team why because the team members of multiplayer games have to speak the same language a Japanese team against a Brazilian team but what about if you get an elite um, group so you get Someone from Brazil, with someone from Japan, with someone from Italy, they can talk what they can now in one eighth of a second. You know, Xbox has been very interesting today. So these are some of the things. Uh, corporate, you know, I mentioned Deloitte, Accenture. Do you know how this could go with VRI or OPI services that we already mentioned? Events, you see this. You QR code, listen on the fly. There's there's great opportunities here on on this industry. Revenue model, implementation, professional services, recurring subscription mo model, multi-year contracts. And this is uh, part of our team. We're increasing our team dramatically to serve you. Um, one of the gentlemen I want to point out is Alessandro Bassarelli. Uh, we have received hundreds of thousands from Microsoft uh, because of the innovation that we provide. That's why we're launching the, our technology native with Microsoft team and also as a plugin. And as we do in that experience, uh, this one is just being great. Uh, but the rest of the team that we have, Diana, Francine, Julio, Chris, and we're just adding some incredible members of the team, Alice, Samari, Asti, and so many, so many more, Tom, and then our developers. Oh my gosh, we're so fortunate. We hope that you um, like this, this presentation. But before I finish, I want to talk about one of the major aspects of our technology that we take very, very seriously, and it's security. For some of these certifications, it takes about a year to go through these processes. And some people ask us, have you been around with this technology like it is for a year? The answer is yes. This has been tested. And there's a lot that we will do better as we serve you. And through you, we get to know clients. But we're HIPAA compliant, SOC2, NIS, uh, NIS leading to FISMA, GDPR. And we have you know, privacy security compliance all through our pro life cycles. So with that said, please, I would love for you to 
call this number. Not necessarily now, just copy it. We'll send it to you. There's a lot that, that we want to do, but please register for them. We have great, great um, opportunities for all of you. Anyone that is present, we will do a demo and we'll get a lot of uh, um, uh, minutes. We'll be able to get minutes on our different accounts. So please register, uh, enjoy it. Use the different accounts, all of them, verbal call, verbal meetings. You feel feel free. Um, I would like you guys to um, um, once again to focus uh, on this on this demo. Use it, experience it. Uh, we're here to serve you. And uh, Chris, Chris, Chris Weston, our our head of um, you know strategic partnerships. Chris, do you have uh, something to say? Let me see if you're if you're connected. Yes, yes. I want to just, uh, first of all, thank you, Saul. Um, the work that you've done is is incredible. I've never worked with somebody that's more brilliant than Saul. So you're all, you're all in for a treat. Um, spend some time with this. Get familiar with the AI technology. Um, Saul, thank you for your vision, for your efforts to create a more understanding world. Additionally, um, let's get you registered for a free demo. Our team will reach out to you. We want to serve you. Take that number down, call your friends and family. It'd be really fun to uh, to just play with the technology. Um, in addition, we'd like to just thank all of you for being here. Thank Gala for allowing us to uh, be a part of this platform. We appreciate it very much. So let's go ahead and ride this new wave of technology and let's magnify your business around the world. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. That was um, impressive. Um... Are you up for a few questions from the um, audience? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Earlier, so we can take as many questions as necessary. Excellent. Okay. First question from Marino. So, will this AI interpreter be able to replace actual interpreters? If so, this will be terrible for interpreters. Marino, you know, we get uh, we get this question all the time. Um, that, that's a good question. Um, so I personally manage uh, work with LSPs. I did over 15,000 hours of interpretation for um, entertainment. Uh, that's where I got, you know, of the Emmy Awards. But I know families, and I this is a, a concern that I have. So this is, this is what it turns out to. This is my perspective on it. We provide superpowers. That's what we do. So as um, as superpowers, do we need 7 billion supermans? No, we don't. Yeah. So I think that we are not a threat for the industry. As companies ask me, uh, they say, so well, are you going to tell our clients? Are you going to say, this is what, your, your number one competitor is not our technology. Your number one competitor is probably your employees who have a non circumvent doesn't have a, an NDA, and they, using our technology, will take your clients. It's all about relationship at the end of the day. So that's your number one competitor. Your second competitor is your competition, who, with our technology, will take your clients. I believe that AI and our technology uh, will actually eliminate monopolies. Why? Because now employees that only be able to have certain hours of the day, now they can do 10 times, 20 times more work with our technology. And now they will start competing and taking clients. So the monopolies will actually be fragmented and there will be more financial resources distributed. It will be an equalizer. Just like we see with the internet. The internet outside of the United States has actually increased social economic status and income and discretionary income because of the possibilities of what it can do. This is what we believe will happen. Uh, hopefully that, that answer that answer your question. So I think that our technology will benefit, especially small businesses in this ecosystem. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Uh, let's see, another question from Tim. Thank you for this wonderful presentation. <laughs> Here's a provocative question. Is your product designed to help foreign governments understand each other? 
is there room for conflict resolution dimension within Meta? Tim, this is one of the reasons why I build this product. We know what is happening today in terms of conflict. And it all goes back to communication understanding. So yes, we're building this product for conflict resolution at any level. Mm -hmm. Whether it is a couple or whether it is a family, whether it is client, provider relationship in business, or ultimately countries. This will be an honor. You know, Vatican has been using this for about six months and they love it. So we hope that this will be the case. Thank you for that question. Okay, thank you. Uh, Debbie is saying, uh, thank you for your presentation. Two questions. One, it seems as though users would have to learn how to speak for translation in order to increase the chances of a more accurate transcription and translations. Um, are there guidelines you've prepared for your users? Let's take the first question, then we'll go to the second. That's a great question. And um, the answer is yes. This is why, Debbie, we need to understand that this product is not a one size fits all. I will never use this, this product on a 911 call. Never. I will never use this product for like sharing, you know, a doctor sharing a, the news of uh, an oncology doctor sharing the news of cancer. And I will never use this product. It's like there's this case for that. And with that said, yes, especially for Bevon call, people need to be more aware. So for instance, not everybody knows what is simultaneous translation or simultaneous interpretation. It's just hard to understand and grab your idea for any common Joe walking on the streets. So yes, there is some training that, that we provide to organizations, to LSPs on how to approach this. Um, you know, sometimes the time pausing on a, on a phone call. So you have to wait until the AI will come back with the other language. There, there is some training that needs to happen in some education. Okay, and the second part of the question, which is something about security, and I think there are two questions about security, so let's take them. Um, you mentioned security briefly. How does the, conf the confidentiality procedure actually work in practice? Are there consents prior to a conversation between a doctor and a patient, which you just mentioned, using the technology? And someone else was asking, um, implementation in large co corporations where security is number one top of mind. Why don't you yeah. give us an idea of how it works? Let me, let me go into, into both. So let me talk a bit yeah. first about uh, HIPAA and then corporation. Mm -hmm. We're HIPAA compliant. I mean, in order to have HIPAA compliance, you actually go to a lot of confidentiality. Um, you go a lot through, you know, the whether it is the hospitals or the schools, they're able to select, they want a transcript, they don't want a transcript. We can provide that transcript in their servers, in our servers. So there's a lot that we can do in terms of uh, of security. And, uh, and it's, it's customized to the client. We can actually create a repository where as you're building your models and AI is learning, it only belongs to that LSP. It will not be shared with us or with anyone else. So we have a lot of securities in, in that aspect. So we can build instances or repositories specific to to client. Um, the other question was corporate. Um, this is also a you know, great concern. And, and the main thing that they ask, they want to make sure the assets are protected, that they are SOC to compliant, which we are, and the procedures, procedures are in place, which we also fulfill. Okay, excellent. A um, couple of questions about Challenges and limitations. What do you think is your biggest limitation or challenge right now for your platform, for your technology? Um, employees <laughs> to continue developing and employees to serve our LSPs and their demand. Okay. Um, there's incredible demand. As we're talking to LSPs, there's, um, I mean, there's a lot of technology out there, but they see that how practical it is to use. Mm -hmm. uh, and kind of our, our challenge right now, it's, it's growth, is being able to okay. serve with great quality, um, you know, similar or higher quality of our products to our relationship with, with LSPs and others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then final question from Nagla. First of all, she says, thank you for awesome presentation. 
uh, will this also be challenging for different dialects and accents? So you, you showed the long list of uh, uh, Arabic varieties, for example, and Spanish varieties. Are there challenges in terms of other dialects and accents? There, there are some. Um, we actually have um, a lot of um, technology in terms of uh, training the models. So we try mm -hmm. to keep those models you know, up to date. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the main challenges. But as you can see, we have a great part of AI is actually categorization. Mm -hmm. And categorization is you know, kind of partitioning every aspect of data. Um, we use both organic data and synthetic data. Mm -hmm. So um, as long as we're doing those, uh, we'll be okay with the dialects and you know everybody increasing as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Um, well, we've reached the end. Thank you so much, Sol. Uh, it was, as I said, really, really interesting. Um, we're looking forward to seeing what future development you guys have in mind. Um, there is one more question. We have five minutes, so I'll say let's take it. Yeah. Um, can your AI be trained for specific companies' needs? That is a fantastic question. <laughs> we, we have, um, uh, through, through another company, of course, mm -hmm. uh, we have worked with companies like you know, Rio Tinto, for instance. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the things that we have done is uh, train the model, not only with specific categories, but also to provide very specific reports in terms of summary, in terms of extraction of data. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we customize to specific clients. So the possibilities are just incredible. And mm -hmm. uh, once again, um, Isabella, thank you. Uh, oh, this is just the beginning. I take it we'll see um, many more developments, I think. Um, let's see. Well, there's another question. Of course, someone else is worried about um, less need for real interpreters and translators. I think you already replied uh, to this. And it mm -hmm. is a concern, of course. It is. This is what we're saying constantly. Mm. Budgets are remaining. Yeah. They're not being substituted. Mm -hmm. And because of AI has lower cost, then a little bit of new budget. So usually they, they serve, you know, English, Spanish, Portuguese, I don't know, three or four mm -hmm. languages, or maybe five languages. And then they don't want to spend any money on the languages to individuals that are just so many of them that have an impact. And with a little bit of budget, now you can reach all of them through AI. Okay. So we're actually seeing the contrary. We're actually seeing that there's more uh, mm -hmm. inclusion, and and with this, I would like I would like to end. Um, a lot of people think that inclusion has to deal with race, religion, mm -hmm. color of skin, and yes, it does. But what they don't realize is that the number one factor mm -hmm. of exclusion is actually language. We all know yeah. a doctor. A lawyer, an engineer, who's probably, mm. as an immigrant, is cleaning bathrooms because they're trapped by because of the language barriers. Yeah. No more. This is what we are on a crusade to eliminate those factors and create organizations that mm -hmm. are truly exclusive, inclusive, where language is actually barriers is eradicated through bridges. This is this is kind of our crusade. That, that we're mm -hmm. doing. So with that, with that said, it's a, it is very important for us to, and this is what we're saying is increasing the budgets. So there's mm -hmm. more inclusion, not only three, four or five languages, because that's all they have money for. So yeah. this is what we're seeing the greatest impact. And we're very happy to see that. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. And one final remark was from Islam Yunus, uh, who says, can this software be a backup or support for human interpreters rather than being a competition? Absolutely. You know, in <laughs> fact, in, in fact, it was it was funny that you mentioned that because uh, we were at the World Congress of Family, you know, mm -hmm. 12,000 people and there were some you know, human interpreters, uh, mm -hmm. several of those. And it was it was brutal. It was so much work. They only <laughs> have two interpreters for three days, eight hour days. Yeah. So the third day, a lot. their brain was just it was so hard for them. So they put our our tool and mm -hmm. they looked at it. And they were reading it and they were just reading. It made things a lot easier. Uh, they were able to correct. It was there anything wrong. They were able to interpret, you know, they were able to adapt and would say, this is so useful. That's what they told us. Mm -hmm. It was so mm -hmm. great to see it, especially after three days of translating. It was just 
or interpreting. It was just fantastic for them to see it. So yes, we see this as a tool. Again, it's a superpower. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you so much, Saul. It was uh, mighty interesting. And thank you to everyone who attended. As I said, the webinar has been recorded. I'll reach out with a follow-up email as soon as the recording is published on our website. But before you go, I'm going to close the webinar. And if you stay on for a couple of seconds, you can fill in the post-webinar survey. Let us know how much you liked um, Saul's presentation. And if you have any other topics uh, about AI that you would like to see uh, featured in our webinars, do let us know. So uh, we hope that you'll come back uh, and present at Gala again. I, I look forward. I really do. Thank okay. you. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Here is once again the QR code. Just a couple of seconds. Let's just so you guys can scan it and get that demo. Okay. Thank you again. Bye, everyone.